Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in, a, in one of the great passages of Scripture in the book of Genesis. You remember the stories in Genesis, and starting in uh, chapter 12 of Genesis, we hear and read about the story of Abraham and how God called him out of essentially Babylon and brought him ultimately to Palestine. And in the process, Abraham uh, uh, was struggling with, uh, with, with his childlessness, and yet because of his faith in the God of Israel, Abraham was told, you will have a child in your old age. It was, it was impossible. Excuse me, Abraham was already 75 years old. And God told him you would have that child. His wife at that time, Sarah, was 65 years old, and she was past the time of childbearing. And even after that, God waited another 25 years so that Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old when God provided so that she would give birth to Isaac. And so she did. What a wonderful uh, miracle. Isaac was, and, and certainly it was a, an evidence that, uh, some, of something that only God could do, that outside the natural order, this was impossible. And so we recognize that Isaac was this special child, and then God does what seems to be the, the most absurd thing that you could imagine. He says, I want you to take Isaac, and I want you to sacrifice him. That, that must have disturbed Abraham greatly. It's in Isaac that he had pinned his hopes. Yes, he had another son by the name of Ishmael, and he longed for Ishmael to be, uh, to, to be used of God and to prosper and, and all, and that's a, a, a right thing, and God said that's going to happen, but it's through Isaac that I am going to demonstrate my power, and he's the one that you're going to give all of your goods to, and he's going to inherit everything of, uh, of yours. And so Abraham, amazingly, uh, it's my opinion, the scripture's quiet on this point, but in my opinion, Abraham never tells Sarah that what he's going to do, but he heads out to sacrifice Isaac. And he goes to a place where God directs him to a mountain, which later on, according to tradition, is the very same mountain on which Jesus was crucified himself, Mount Moriah. And he takes Isaac there. And along the way, Isaac suddenly realizes that We've got the fire and we've got the wood, but we don't have the lamb for the sacrifice. And Abraham says, God himself will provide the lamb. Now, Isaac continues on, and pretty soon they reach the spot. And you know the story about how Abraham binds Isaac and puts him on the altar. And again, uh, there were, the scripture is silent, so we don't know exactly how resistant Isaac was at that particular time. Uh, certainly he's going to be obedient to his father, but there must have been some fear and trepidation in his mind as well. And Abraham puts Isaac on the altar, and he has the knife, and he is about to slay his son when the angel of the Lord intervenes. And he says, don't do it. And Abraham looks up, and there is a ram in the thicket nearby. Of course, there are many who have made the, uh, made the point that God said, I'm going to provide a lamb, but instead he provided a ram. There's a difference there. The ram is the male adult goat, and the lamb is the, um, is the offspring of a ram and a ewe. And so, and so God provided a ram, and this particular phrase has become prophetic about how God was going to provide in the future 
a lamb who would take away the sins of the world. And that's what he did through Jesus. So many, many commentators have seen that particular prophecy being carried out in this particular event. Now, it's very important that we recognize not only the theological significance of Isaac's sacrifice as co covering our sins through Christ, but it's also important that we recognize the importance of Abraham's obedience. What an important thing it was that Abraham, despite the fact that he didn't understand what God was asking him to do, he went and he obeyed. And later on in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, we read that Abraham had reasoned in his heart that if this is what God was calling him to do, God was able to raise him from the dead. And so here we see not only the sacrifice of Jesus, but we see faith in the resurrection also. And all of this is contained here in this passage in Genesis 22. And so I remind you that this is a picture of the sacrifice that Jesus made that God intended for him to make for our salvation. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the many different aspects of this that encourage us and bless us. Help us to have the faith of Abraham. Help us to have the obedience of Abraham and grant to us eternal life, even as you've given that to Abraham and Isaac and all who have faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.